Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's new episode of X Vlog Live. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And sorry if I seemed a little disheveled. I literally just jumped out of the shower because I did a 50 minutes of VR working out. This is my fourth week in a row. And Jesus, I'm sore as H, but you know what? It's worth it. And because of your sore, I would imagine that means I'm doing it right. So uh, there you go. Uh, obviously, shout out to um, um, Supernatural Fitness. My coach, uh, Leanne, who Coach Leanne is dope and amazing. And she keeps me on my toes. So this is, it's, it, dude, I can't believe I'm working in my own house. And it's actually working. It's pretty dope. Uh, listen, folks, obviously, we had a whole other show that I wrote. And, and Jesse, can, Jesse and C Money can attest to this. I was sending them mm -hmm. show notes at almost a quarter to midnight yesterday, yes. you know, because that's what I do. And, on, well, we have breaking news, folks. And, of course, we're going to get serious here because 1,900 people uh, between uh, at Microsoft that, of course, he, uh, uh, that are work, work, well, worked for Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox have been laid off. Now, this is a disturbing trend that seemed to hit the fan with this late with this news, but just in the last, I don't know, 24 to 36 hours, there's been a lot of people from a lot of development companies losing their jobs. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that with this 1900, I think that uh, based on, you know, again, I keep my ear to the floor because I'm like to think that I'm part of the industry, we're upwards of over 5,000 layoffs and we're not even into February of the new year. Very, very scary stuff. Um, we're going to break it down. I think one of the big ones is the announcement that Mike Yabara is leaving Blizzard. Now, obviously, that dude bleeds PC. That guy is Mr. Blizzard. Um, I don't understand what happened. But we're going to find out because we have a statement not only from Mike Yabara, but we have a memo that was uh, that that we got thanks to, of course, um, TheVerge.com and Tom Warren, who put this out on the socials. Obviously, this is being covered by Jez Corden of Windows Central as well. And Tom Henderson also is, uh, has been tweeting out there and putting out some information. So we're going to use everyone's stuff, give everyone the proper credit. But we want to welcome in everybody here. And obviously, we have a guest, folks. Normally, it's just me and C Money, Mr. Pony Slasher himself. But uh, <laughs> we are today joined by Jesse Norris of the Xbox era. Jesse, welcome back, brother. It's great to have you here. Hello. It's been a while, and, and what a day to return. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Again, we had a whole Crazy. other show ready to rock and roll, and well, you know, this is breaking news, and we already got 400 people here, and we're five minutes into the show. I think this is going to be a big one, but Jesse, I got to tell you, man, uh, the work that you you consistently do, uh, not, uh, not only in on camera, uh, when you're with, of course, John and Nick, who are absolutely amazing uh, content creators, mm. what you do behind the scenes, Phenomenal work, brother. Um, I don't know if they tell you that. They should give you that information, but I'm telling it to you. I want to pat you on the ass, brother. <laughs> Take a back. Thank you on the ass. Maybe pause on, on ass. that one, all right? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, listen, it's great to have you back here. Um, obviously, uh, we love. I love working with you. And obviously, you know, you've been here many times before. So we're going to get into the big news. But C Money, a.k.a. Pony Smasher. Pony Snuffer, whatever you want to say. Him and the missus are out there doing the uh, the Xbox Lords work each and every day. Welcome back, brother. How you feeling? Feeling great, man. Feeling great. Yeah, this was a, a big, big change. We were actually uh, going to be making a video uh, before the show, and then this news bro goes like, ah, shit. All right, yeah. so you had to change the video. <laughs> so we're put, we put we just put that up. It's like, what the f uh, the breaking news is fun when it takes your plans and throws it in the trash, right? Yes. But no, nah, I'm I, excited, man. It's a yeah. it's a good day. Uh, I mean, not a good day. That's a sad situation, but great day for news, right? Like it's a indeed, it's, yeah. I mean, listen. Uh, unlike other, you know, so called journalistic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, organizations, which will name, uh, remain nameless because you know we don't name names on this show. 
uh, we're going to report on the news, uh, and uh, as as we should. I think that as a community, we have to be good humans and sympathize with the fact that 1,900 people are without jobs. Uh, now, I'm sure you know there's going to be a significant uh, severance. Uh, Microsoft handles that very well with their employees. Obviously, Activision Blizzard now a part of Microsoft, so I would imagine it's going to be handled. Uh, as you would expect professionally, um, but it's still 1,900 people are losing their jobs. And that is terrifying in a world where everything is so damn expensive. Um, so let's get right into it. And of course, uh, this comes the way of The Verge. Uh, and I want to thank Tom Warren for always being, you know, spot on. I mean, the guy is as sharp as a pen and uh, he's always, you know, in it, so to speak. Uh, I have the uh, Phil Spencer uh, document in front of me. And again, shout out to Tom Hend uh, Tom Warren of TheVerge.com for providing this information. Obviously, like I said, Tom Henderson's putting stuff out there. Jez Corden is putting stuff out there. And we will get to everyone's thing uh, as, as we can, you know, we roll through this. But this is Phil Spencer, CEO or head of Microsoft Gaming. And this is what he had to say, folks. It's been a little over three months since the Activision Blizzard and King teams joined Microsoft. As we move forward in 2024, the leadership of Microsoft Gaming and Activision Blizzard is committed to aligning on a strategy and an execution plan with a sustainable cost structure that will support the whole of our growing business. Together, we set priorities, identified areas of overlap, and ensured that we are all aligned on the best opportunities for growth. As part of the process, we have made the painful decision to reduce the size of our gaming workforce by approximately 1,900 roles out of the 22,000 people on our team. The gaming leadership team and I are committed to navigating this process as thoughtfully as possible. The people who are directly impacted by these reductions have all played an important part in the success of Activision Blizzard, ZeniMax, and the Xbox teams. They should be proud of everything they've accomplished here. We are grateful for all of their creativity, passion, and dedication they have brought to our games, our players, and our colleagues. Uh, we will provide our full support to those who are impacted during this transition, including severance benefits informed by local employment laws. Those whose roles will be impacted will be notified, and we will ask that you please treat your departing colleagues with respect and compassion that is consistent with our values. And in closing, he says this, looking ahead, we'll continue to invest in areas that will grow our business and support our strategy of bringing more games to more players around the world. Although this is a difficult moment in, for our team, I am as confident as ever in your ability to create and nurture the games, stories, and worlds that bring players together. Jesse, I want to go to you first on this. Now, you said get ready for corpo speech, and... Kinda, that's what it is. Uh oh, we lost Jesse. What the H? What uh, the mother? All right. So I don't know what happened to Jesse. Uh, we'll get him back. Obviously, I was reading from a different screen. I'm gonna go to you first. See money. Um, yes, obviously. Sir. Uh, let's see. Hold on a second. I got a message here. Going to change my internet. Okay, so he'll be back in a sec. He kept freezing. All right, so that's fine. We'll get Jesse back here in a hot second. Um, see money. Look. Um. What a, we're podcasters, right? We are, yes. a, 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 and outside of pa podcasters, we are husbands. Uh, you have children. I have nephews. I have nieces. I have godchildren. Um, I run a household with my salary. You run a household with your business. Um, and we are, you know, we look in our small circles uh, for making it better for our family. Um, when you see something like this, um, my heart breaks. Uh, and I say that with not being facetious at all, folks. Uh, I like being a good human. And I, Mrs. Boom and I go out of our way to do extraordinary things that you don't even know about outside of what we do in this community because 
We love paying it forward. We're blessed beyond words. And I'm blessed because I have a channel that we've turned into a small business. Um, Mrs. Boom is working and I have a pension. And I worked super hard to get that, but nothing is guaranteed. And when I see people losing their jobs, it bothers me because I understand that even though I have a good pension, there are sometimes there are things I cannot get. And I can only imagine said person not having a salary to pay these bills, to pay their con ed, their cable, their car note. It's scary. Um, and I think why this kind of stings a little bit more, at least for me, as, a, as what I like to consider a good human, see money, is it was just announced that Microsoft is now a $3 trillion company taking over their number one spot. Now, I totally get that when you have an acquisition as big of, of Activision Blizzard King, there's going to be over, overlaps in positions. Yeah. I understand that. Um, I would like to believe that some people were moved in other positions. I don't know. I'm I'm not a corporate guy. I'm just a knucklehead podcaster. Um, but I I, I I wanted to talk about this. I think it's re incredibly important. Uh, we'll get into the cancellation of the Blizzard game, the survival game, which yeah. is, blows my mind. Uh, Mike Ybarra leaving, even more crazy. But let, 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 let's talk about the human element, which is something I think that uh, more people need to do. I know you and the missus talk about it all the time because obviously, you know, it's important to you guys. 1,900 people losing their job, man. It sucks. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And, you know, obviously our, our thoughts and, you know, prayers are with the families that were affected. You know, hopefully they are, you know, quick to, to get a new job. And especially, you know, coming from these studios, I mean, I I got to believe that they're not going to have as hard as a time as some other people might have um, with the references and stuff that they're going to be able to get from the right. leadership at Microsoft and the other teams. Um, that being said, um, I will say, obviously, you know, you, you look at this and, and there's obviously always two ways of looking at this. Obviously, we know the the human element sucks, right? Nobody wants to lose their job. Nobody wants to be let go. And, and that's a tough tough position to be in um you know we've all had it happen at some point in our lives so um i definitely you know feel for them and, and i get that um that being said you know phil and the team this is not like when you see like these these embracer groups or these other people who are you know biting off more than they can chew or you oh. know they they can't afford it so like sony when they're letting people go it's because they can't afford to do it you know they have to get people gone so that they can recoup some of that cost and like this is a whole different ball game this is microsoft you you said it right three trillion dollar company right but you know like you said right i i do have my own company right so there's a there's a the, the difference, though, is that being $3 trillion doesn't mean that they waste money, right? So they can't, they can't justify, you know, redundancies um, just to, to be nice, right? You know, you got, you, you got to remember, they took on publishers, not just studios, right? Complete yes. publishers. So the Activision Blizzard publisher, Bethesda publisher. Xbox publisher. So you're looking at all of these people there and there's a lot of people with similar titles and you got to imagine, I, I honestly believe a lot of this stems from Redfall. Um, not the, not the people being let go, but the idea of what they have going on where they thought it would make sense to just let everybody just do their own thing and it would work. And I think the problem is when you have too many chefs in the kitchen, there's a problem. So when you have people at different positions who all three share the same position and they just all have different beliefs as what should be going on, you create conflict, you know, with, with amongst yourselves. Right. And that's, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can kind of look, stand back and say, okay, we have this many people in this position across these three companies. I mean, realistically speaking, who do we need? Who's the person who's going to take us forward? Who's the person who's going to move us forward, right? Yes. Um, and, and that's a big conversation to have, especially with how many people they have now. 
they have too many studios to be having like nonsense going on. So they need to kind of just take care of any redundancies that they have. And it's clear that these this wasn't a situation where like, you know, these people sucked. So we got rid of them. I mean, I'm sure, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that there's some people in there that they looked at their performances and they were like, hey, listen, you know, they're not up to snuff. Let's get them out because we need a cut, right? But you got to imagine that these are just people who at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't make sense to overlap all of these positions. And, you know, again, if it were another company, I would be like, oh, wow, like this is crazy. Look at what these bad decisions has put them in. And they're, you know, screwing these people. You know, at the end of the day, it's Microsoft. They just broke three trillion dollars. They're not doing this because it's just oh, they they have to do it because they're going to go out of business if they don't or it, no, they're doing this because this is business. And they're, they know that at the end of the day, they have to make these costs cutting measures. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not necessary. It's redundancy. Nobody wants to waste money at these, at these companies. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I trust what Phil has going on. I trust the team he put into place, you know, Matt Booty, Sarah Bond and him, you know, they're, that's the Trinity right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like they're, it's true. like they're, they're not pieces of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they care about gamers. They care about the developers. You know, I, I said it. They I care about their constantly. employees even more so. They do. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like they care about the people who work for them and they don't do this just kind of haphazardly. Right. And again, this wasn't a mess up. Nobody's going to be sitting there saying, man, how could we have avoided this? You, you can't. You brought on all these big entities that have these positions that are duplicated. You know what I'm saying? It's just, just is what it is. It sucks a hundred percent. And we do feel for the people who lost their jobs. But again, the beautiful thing about this for them is that they weren't let go in a bad situation. They were let go in an obvious situation. They were let go in a situation where like, look, Microsoft just merged. They had three of us who did the same position and they went with the person who had it longer or they went with this person. They, you know, they're going to be able to sell the reason why they were let go pretty easily which would make it very easy for them to go get another position and probably start at a higher place than they were at Microsoft. Because if you, if you work for the big leagues and you go somewhere else, it tends to give you a little more value. So I think these people will, um, will bounce back pretty easily. Um, and any low level people who were let go, um, you know, I mean, that's might be a tougher sale. Um, but again, at the end of the day, you know, it's not a charity. Like we can't, we can't forget this, man. It's not a charity. You know, they, they have to do what's best for the company. They have to do what's best for the, the gamers. And they have to do what's best for the other developers who are going to be there, right? They, they have to make sure that it, it's fair for everybody. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, it sucks that it's happened. Um, but like I said, man, this doesn't make me have a negative thought on microsoft or xbox i'm not saying here saying, no we kind of figured they... this was going to happen we, we yeah, i mean again we, i'm not saying it's everybody right, was folks, saying it but we we, we no. all kind of figured simply because it was i think someone wrote in the chat they when they acquired activision blizzard king it was the equivalent of fourteen thousand people um Facts. you know that's a lot of people they have over tw twenty two thousand people now between bethesda xbox blizzard king activision and and again no one is suggesting or making light of it but 1900 versus 22,000 people yeah it was such a small percentage it, of and the people. again no one's suggesting that that's okay like oh they, yeah people. But, no uh, of course but they had to right. but i will say i saw it in the chat and i was thinking this and i, and I forgot to say it so i did want to bring it up you know um I believe it was Highlander who who brought it up. Yeah, he, he got it. Yeah, I got he's it. saying that that Bungie went ahead, and this is what I'm talking about. This is not a a piece of shit move by Xbox because if they are letting them go now, you damn sure know that they could have did it, could have done it before the holiday. Uh, yes, but they didn't. Whereas Bungie sat there because they had to do it, and there was no other choice because they wouldn't make it or whatever the bullshit reason they had. They let them go, and they. Didn't even give them anything for it. These people got through the holidays. They had their paychecks. They had everything. They're going to get severance. They're going to get help getting relocated to another uh, place. They're going to get referrals from 
Phil fucking Spencer. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're going to get, they're going to be helped moving forward. Unlike, you know, people who are, have been let go recently in bad situations. So, um, you know, again, thoughts and prayers to those affected. Um, but this is not a, a, but the shame on Microsoft. Phil yeah, this, needs to there, go. There's what gonna are they be doing? Some disingenuous PlayStation people out there are, are ringing the alarm bell as, as calling. You know, I'm sure they're going to use this as console war rhetoric, which is gross. And if I see it, I'm just blocking. I did, most of these knuckleheads are blocked already. But if you are part of it, Facts. I'll block you uh, and, and just keep it moving. Um, listen, real quick, two things. I do want to catch up on super chats because there's been a couple of them. Uh, I saw the messages. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying. To, I got three screens open. So I, I, the game in front of you right now is called Army of Ruin. As you Fire. can tell, it is a evolvement of what is one of my favorite games of all time, Vampire Survivor, except it has a Dungeons and Dragons uh, skin on it. Nice Obviously, graphics. it's 3D models. Uh, right now, yes. you can go pick it up on Xbox. It's eight bucks. And the amount of content in this game is just madness. Uh, as a matter of fact, Luke Lore, uh, Insipid Ghost, who was who joined us last night, has been banging the drum for this. I didn't know this existed. I was looking for schmucks, is this old? you know, like shoot 'em ups. Uh, what's that? Is this old? Like, has it been? Yeah, I think it's. A, I think it's like came out like last year. I think. Oh shit! Uh, so exactly. like right after Vampire so, Survivor. So again, here you go, folks. Eight bucks. It is single player, and there is so much to unlock. Like it's all I want to play. It's literally all I've been playing. I have hours and hours and like, hours in this game. It's just it looks like Vampire Survivor. Yeah, it's just like, it looks like it's it's that game. Yeah, that's it gonna is. be crazy. It's so uh, freaking I'm good. It. It's just bonkers. Uh, so yeah, Army of Ruin. I believe it's on other platforms. I bought it on Xbox, but it's eight bucks. So there you go. Um, Jesse, before we get to your brother, Highlander 001, Jesus Christmas. Uh, not only does he drop two $10 Super Chats, he has gifted, folks, five Double Barrel Gaming memberships. That is, dude, Highlander's I don't even the know man. what to say. That is incredibly generous of you, brother. I super appreciate it. So the first Super Chat, he says, boom, don't forget that Activision is, is also a publisher. Microsoft does not need two people doing the same job. They will get health care for a year and six months to a year's worth of pay. Wow. I did not know that. Thank you for that. See, there you go. This is why you like working for Microsoft, you know, because they do take care of their employees. Look at that. A year of health care, super important PS, <coughs> by the way. And the fact that you're getting six months or to a year of actual pay while you go look for a job, that's that's phenomenal. Uh, his second ten dollars super chat says, "When Bungie laid off their staff before Christmas and they got nothing, at least those from Activision get a good package until they get a new job." Ponies are saying Xbox is doomed. Yep, see that's what I was literally just referring to. Block and move on. Anyone that you oh, wow. see doing it, just block them because they are a toxic mf. Sorry, um, Jesse. Look. This week, and we're only at Thursday, Riot Games laid off a significant amount of people. We just saw a report yesterday that People Can Fly laid off a bunch of people that were working on a Square Enix project. Um, I think it was 30 people, if I, if I recall the story. There was another developer, which I, it slipped my mind, who... This week has been bad for the game development community. And obviously, here we are, 1,900 workers out of the 22,000 Microsoft employees that are that make up X, Xbox, Bethesda, uh, King, Blizzard, Activision. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty sad day. What, what, what are your hot takes, man? Um, well, first off, I would say I just like to go over. So there's a difference with why certain things happen in Bracer. Microsoft last year, so many tech companies grew to match demand during COVID and yes. that bubble burst. And so now we're seeing the very slow deflation of that bubble because they hired up. And instead of actually doing hard work and figuring out the right way to make things work, it's just easy to just fire people. You just get rid of them. Easy peasy. They're gone. You then look better for your shareholders because in America, we have horrible 
employee protections, as in almost none, depending on the state. And it's uh, you are legally obligated as a public publicly created company mm -hmm. to be awful. So at, at this point, there's no there's no defense for Microsoft or Xbox in any of this. The the situation is a realistic and it's it's just it's typically evil. There's nothing surprising about it. I think a lot of people see, like they say, oh, capitalism and, and the mergers aren't bad and we get stuff on Game Pass and now there's going to be better work for these devs because Kodak's gone and all that stuff. And yes, but there's also the inevitability that because corporations aren't your friends, because they don't care about most of the people working there, <clears throat> there can be very good people working. Like Phil Spencer can be a very good person if you know him, but when he's a boss, he is a... He can fire he's many a, thousands of people. Yeah. yeah. The, to boss. to do that, you aren't a friend. You aren't someone that should be la lauded or looked up to. It's the typical dickhead businessman who has to, you know, separate my personal feelings and the, what's best for the business. And it's like the, the company could afford to pay these people for another hundred years. It's just not about that. People say, oh, a $3 trillion valuation spent $67 billion and now firing people. And it's like, yeah, that's pretty normal because companies are bad. They're not good. None of this is good. There's no need to defend it or make it A versus B. It's right. just typically bad. Um, and the the thing that does get to me a bit, and we can go over every side of it, is there are people who will use this as fodder and feed to try and push feelings they've either had in the past or there are a few, you know, shithead console warriors who want to make it about, well, how about this? And how about that? And it's like, don't worry about that. None of that matters. If you ignore that, you don't amplify it. We don't have to talk about it more. The main issue, and I know people, I've seen a lot of sentiment, I hope this ends soon, and it's like, it's not, because this is the system. This is how it works. Like, I was happy as someone who covers Xbox when I saw them buying Bethesda and I saw them buying Activision. It's like, cool, I get these in Game Pass, I got way more to cover, the platform's gonna give me more to do, and also a whole bunch of people are probably gonna get fired. And it's like, it's just, it's not surprising it's not good. It just sucks. There, There's no, I don't see any need to defend it outside of just trying to explain. There's been so many people, uh, especially in the, the in, uh, industry who cover gaming, who seem blindsided by it. I'm like, where have you been? This was inevitable because companies are shitty. Like there, there is no reality where uh, a trillion dollar company buys one for 67 billion and you don't see a huge percentage reduction in workforce aka they just fire a bunch of people and, and try and gossip it up with their corpo talk and like i know we all yeah, we like in the green we, room you said get ready for some corpo talk boom and and, and i read phil's i wrote phil's thing and i'm gonna be honest with you as corporate as, as as you could possibly get honestly yeah but, yeah. And I see people in the chat, and it's just constantly Sony and Xbox and Sony. They both suck as their yes. their companies. Nintendo the sucks companies too. suck. N like they Nintendo, I, I know people point to Iwata and he taking a pay cut, and it's good. But also, the actual work culture in Japan is bad. Like the yeah, actual, it's, it's awful. It's not bad. It's, it's the thing we think of as crunch is the norm. It's yeah. how people are just expected to behave. Like everywhere has it bad, and you can. Like, I, I got to spend, what was it, about half an hour on episode 100 just hanging out and talking with Phil, and he seemed really nice. Everyone I know who hangs out and talks to them says he seems really nice. But at the end of the day, he's a massively multi-millionaire, high-level executive at a world-dominating $3 trillion company. He's not going to be a good guy when he's, you know, actually doing his job as a businessman. So, I mean, like, in the long I mean, the run, only... this... Yeah, go ahead. The real... Real quick, the only thing is, like, I, I understand the sentiment for sure. Like, I, I understand the idea, you know, big company, bad because they have a lot of money and they can do. But, like, again, well, no, they're not allowed like, like, to be not, good. You a, can't be a successful company and be kind to people. It just doesn't work well, I, but in I mean, this economy. That depends who you ask, right? Because, like, the hundreds of thousands of people who do work for Microsoft who get all their benefits covered and their game pass are you know given to them and they have all these other benefits and quality of life and they're voted number one for the best place to work you know yeah. you spend 90 
five percent of your life working right and most people who work there are very happy so it's like as much as it's easy to say when they have to you know rip the band-aid and, and make this decision that all these companies are evil i mean people are happy working for them right like Microsoft yeah, but it's, it's only a band-aid to rip off because of the focus on growth so if there wasn't that focus on growth and they could actually just be like yeah we want to be sustained and actually focus long term it would be great but no one ever gets to do that because most yeah. shareholders are idiots and they're beholden to them legally to constantly do this stuff. So yeah, it's a good place to work, but like, I mean, it was just a year ago, exactly at this time, they cut a, how many jobs? Like, it's just, it is that big bubble. They hired up Activision hired up and, and the way mergers sure. typically work is you'll cut people before and after, but you don't cut during. So you cut before to look more attractive. When things are going on, you try and stay the course until you get acquired then a lot get cut and and that still only happens just because it's the easiest thing like it is it is much easier to just fire people and make the numbers go higher right before your quarterly report hits than it is to try and figure out a way to integrate and keep people around and all that stuff and so so in the long run they are a very good company to work for but that's they had the same issue pretty much every mega corporation had where the covid demand jumped up they all wanted to match it now demand is down the economy is down because even though in like inflation stopped it didn't go back down to where it was prices are still high like overall it's just it's it's weird that so many people feel caught off guard by this because it's not new it shouldn't be and, and a lot of people really yeah a lot of people are conflating it with the embracer method of grew too much and are desperate to cut costs because otherwise they're gonna freaking completely fall apart that's not this like no, i've seen people say what is wrong with this time. industry has the money yeah yeah this it, isn't an silly. industry issue this is just how business works and it sucks well, this is but how it's not it, it even is know. it's how life works right like you like there's like nothing's a charity right business is not a charity your life is not a charity you don't sit there and say well you know i make x amount of dollars so you know, I, I'm going to go out and just feed everybody who I could possibly feed as long as I it, No, you're going to always take care of your core first. Right. That's the same mentality that happens with business. Right. That business needs to feed everyone that it employs and the people who are got to go because they are either redundant or they're not cutting, you know, fitting the, the bill anymore. It's just part of what it is. And I don't look at that as I mean, I know a lot of people do. I, I don't look at it as like big corporation bad big corporation is doing amazing things for a lot of people They're, they do a lot of you know things for the world and they do a lot of things for their customers and their you know i mean if we if we bring it to what we are which is we're gamers and we're focused on you know what what happens in gaming you know they are the only entity out there spending a shit ton of money on making sure that we have a constant flow of games and game pass like they're not cutting corners for us and i think it just all plays together i just want to be careful with the idea that this like just because they're big or just because they're businesses like businesses are not evil yes obviously they are run by people who want to make money but the only way people make money is by offering services that customers want. Unless you're talking about like these pharmaceutical companies, those are the whole different ball game, right? Those yeah, are that, that, that's, a, that's a, evil, yeah, a whole different card altogether. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but Microsoft relies on us loving their products. Yep. So they can't do shit to ruin it. So they have With to kind of work towards making us happy in some way, shape, or form. Well, I think that's true for Xbox because Xbox is really the only public facing thing for like cool thing for microsoft otherwise it's mostly business to business um yep. with their cloud stuff and and you know all their licensing fees on windows and office and all that type of stuff um Correct. but i am the type of person that if you don't become worth billions of dollars by not willing to you know work in the muck it's, it's impossible with how with how western business structures and economies are you you can't be good or nice overall. You can have very good and nice people. You can have good and nice initiatives. Um, I don't know. It's it's just, it's definitely felt like it immediately jumped to some people have an agenda that they want to push in different I, areas. I, I don't like that. Ignoring the, yeah, yeah. Ignoring like just that. the focus should be, and, and, and also 
conflating that this has to do with problems in the industry when this type of firing of people is because of regular shitty business things like this isn't the embracer this isn't the we grew too much and we've just got to cut it could be a bit of that on activision side like I, I saw some people i know and i really like saying like this is on phil for over hiring and it's like well he didn't hire the people at activision so on this it's much more just yes uh it's a function of consolidation and it is the part of when people say consolidation is bad yes this is the very bad part of it where almost every time and it didn't happen right away with um bethesda but it is happening over time there are redundancies there are people that do the exact same jobs because they were a publisher That's they horrible. bought one publisher they just bought another publisher there's a lot of overlap there yes and corporations are not going to look at overlap and easy cuts to up their profits more and just say ah never mind we like these people we'll keep them around they're going to be businesses and they're going to say nope see you later so well yeah. also for the people themselves like what job are they going to do right like it it's much better for them to go somewhere where they can actually be valuable and have a chance to make a mark. Why are you going to sit there at a place where there's two other people doing your same exact job? With, I mean, unless you have no ambition, right? If you have no well, ambition, it, then yeah, you just want to sit it down and collect the check. How separate right? are they? Are they, are they coming together all under one roof and everything really does overlap? Cause I think at first they weren't going to do that as much. But that is part of the integration process is figuring out who goes where. Also, yep. anyone would want to keep their job and not get fired to then have to go find another one. So it would be better. And it'll never happen because it can't happen with publicly traded companies. It would be yep. better to know that, hey, you're probably going to get fired. You should start looking for something else. They'll never say that because legally they can't yep. because it hurts the business in the bottom line. That's why they give them but severance, right? They give them yeah, six and months to a year. Severance we have no say, idea hey, what the severance is going to be exactly it. because it is, they said, we'll follow the local guidelines for it. And it yeah, with so people wherever being they in live, all different places. Okay. Yeah. And yep. if you're in somewhere nice and it's lucky, Hey, great. If you're in Florida and you can just be fired and severance is not a thing, then it sucks. So depending, yeah, depending dude, on where that, you live. That, yep. Yeah. Yeah, like Riot absolutely. said directly, we are doing this and Riot's yes, giving a Riot very good severance said package. They, they had a quite, uh, a pretty uh, prominent plan for their employees that were affected. They 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 detailed it. It was for like they're going to provide uh, like like laptops for the people to go look for jobs. Everyone leaves with a I think it was what was it six months Jesse or a year of of pay. Um, I don't remember. I, th I think it was six, but I, I do not remember. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do a quick look up. Listen, uh, I obviously we're going to continue this conversation. A couple of people in the chat, uh, Shane G says so easy to say corporations bad and evil lol microsoft provides a phenomenal living for three hundred thousand employees and again like i mean it's, it's 230 or 230 uh, they went well they they had gone up and then they went down i don't know what they're at right now but yeah it's a yeah. lot of people no I, I mean they do employ a lot of people listen this is not easy no one's and, and i see some of the knuckleheads here I, I'm, I don't even get involved with it. I did I did uh, actually message someone directly that was coming here to be a knucklehead PlayStation gamer. Don't do that. Let's can we be adults here? Uh, no one is capping for well, Microsoft. No one well, is that's capping the that's for the Xbox. issue with the anonymity of being online. It's just very easy to come and be a shithead when no one knows who you actually are. Yeah, so. and, and don't do that. Don't, right. don't be a shithead, folks. Come here, hang out, let's have an adult conversation. We are three power professionals here, and we're going to handle it as such. I think we've done a great job. But I do want to move on to the Mike Yabara situation. Uh, I am floored by this. Now, obviously, and this is public facing. This isn't no inside baseball stuff. Phil and Mike have had a good relationship, but it's never been like the greatest uh you've seen them talk to each other online and you seem like there was some i don't want to say rivalry i just think that there's been something there I, I i can't put a finger on it i don't know them personally so i can't say one doesn't like the other or or vice versa i have no idea um but the one thing i will say about mike yabara is when he left xbox he left xbox rather quickly uh, and he went to go do a job, which is what he called his dream job. He is a Blizzard nerd. This is Thanks. a this is a C C O O or a CCO or a CEO that is 
literally living the dream. He is a PC guy. He always has president. been. He probably always will be. Uh, and working and being the head of Blizzard is dream come true land stuff. Um, so him leaving was a bit shocking, to be honest with you. So I have his direct tweet from his official Twitter account. I want to read it. And I'm going to hand it off to you, C-Money, to get your opinion on this. And this is what Mike Ybarra said a uh, mere f- two hours ago. I want to thank everyone who was impacted today uh, for their meaningful contributions to their teams, to Blizzard, and to the players' lives. It's an incredibly hard day, and my energy and support will be focused on all of those amazing individuals impacted. This is no, in no way, my, uh, in no way, a reflection on your amazing work. If there's anything that I can help with, connections, recommendations, etc., DM me. Uh, now, this is what he goes on to say. To the Blizzard community, I also want to let you know. Oh, oh, I, I, okay. I also want to let you all know today is my last day at Blizzard. Leading Blizzard through an incredible time and being part of the team, shaping it for the future ahead was an absolute honor. Having already spent 20 plus years at Microsoft and with the acquisition of Activision Blizzard behind us, it's time for me to once again become Blizzard's biggest fan out from the outside. To the incredible teams at Blizzard, thank you. Words cannot express how I feel about all of you. You are all amazing. Continue to do incredible things and always keep Blizzard blue and the players at the forefront of every decision. And in closing, to all of those impacted today, I am always available to you and understand how challenging today's news is. My heart is with each and every one of you. Um, And, of course, I got a comment here from Jez Corden of Windows Central, and he says, I'm devastated. Devastated for you, the teams, the fans. WoW is in a better place than it's ever been in years. I'm so sorry. Let's talk about it, C-Money. Break it down, man. So this is the thing. I was also very shocked when I saw the name. Um, But then I started to think about it. And then in my mind, it becomes a little less shocking. Um, It's clear Mikey Barrow is an ambitious dude. Um, And, you know, like we said, you know, he left um xbox rather abruptly um we kind of didn't see that one coming either um but to take his dream job right so we could rationalize it makes sense but you know he wanted he wanted to to move up and i feel like maybe his beef with phil was that he wasn't given the opportunity to move up more than where he was um and i find this an, an, another kind of relation to pete hines um, in the sense that as soon as Xbox and Phil decided to put someone directly above them, not just answering to him, but to have Matt Booty, who is going to be the one that Bethesda answers to, all of a sudden, he's out, right? Mikey Barra, before this acquisition went through, did not show i mean obviously it's I, it would make sense but it, he did not show any signs of leaving matter of fact he talked about how great the future looks and all this other stuff right for me i look at it as they have mad booty above blizzard as well right where in, in activision everybody's going to be answering to matt booty um i think that his position got uh, essentially belittled what does the point of being a president mean if at the end of the day you still got to make sure you run everything through Matt Booty, right? Um, and he says, I already was working for Xbox for over 20 plus years, basically saying, I'm not doing that shit again. Okay. They already, I think, whatever caused him to want to leave the first time repeated itself now. He thought maybe he was going to move up. He thought he was going to get a bigger role. Maybe he thought something was going to happen, and it didn't go that way. And now he's out. He left. Um, I, and I, I think it probably has to do with maybe that cancellation that we're going to talk about separately. Yes. Um, 
but it might be all tied in. You know, maybe he thought he was going to have the last word on things, and maybe they said no. You know, they overthrew his power, which humbled him and made him say, this is not what I want. At, at my position, I could go work for an another company, be the president and be the or the CEO and be the boss and not have to take words from you guys. Right. Like that's the energy that I got from this. Um, and again, specifically when he says that he already <laughs> had been working for them for 20 plus years. Right. It's it's been a few years now that he's not had been working for them. Right. So to kind of bring that back up, that alludes to me that whatever the reason was that he left before still here now, whether it's a beef with, with Phil, I don't know. I mean, Phil seems like a pretty chill dude. Um, but at the end of the day, business is business and you know, people's ambitions are their ambitions. And he probably figures if he can't make a meaningful impact at blizzard anymore, because everything has to run through booty and, the chain of command again. Um, I think he's out and that's exactly what took place. So yeah. that's where I'm at with it. No, I mean, you know, you, you, you make a lot of fantastic points. Uh, we don't know if uh, he was expecting to be put in a bigger role, but I am going to say that you're onto something because uh, ultimately Matt Booty is overseeing a lot. Uh, yep. And, you know, obviously things have to go through him. Uh, and I think what, what that really comes down to is after what happened with Red Bull, they yes. that can never 100%. happen again, folks. So it I'm cannot. sorry, it cannot they, happen again. These places um, don't exist independently anymore. No right. matter what the name on the screen pops up, Activision, Blizzard, Bethesda, it doesn't matter. Everyone is going to say it's an Xbox game, and if it shits the bed, it's Xbox that's got to deal with it, yep. not Blizzard, not Bethesda. They're going to say, "Look at Phil messed up." They didn't do what the team needed. They did this, blah blah and blah. Now blah, even blah. more so, it's going to be Matt Booty, or or even more, uh, even yep. more so than that, as Sarah Bond. She's the president of Xbox. Oh, look what she didn't do. Absolutely, right? People are going to point. Absolutely. So you, you, now, you're, can I say one more thing about this? Sure. Real quick? Absolutely. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that even though, even though this was not directly related to xbox and i get phil is the bigger uh person here matt booty had something to say because he's over all those things i get it but sarah has not been they gave her this role they gave her this title where the fuck is she outside of her normal twitter post they no, have, she doesn't I have it's not seen, her her thing is just like the Xbox brand and hardware and marketing, she wouldn't be over any of that at all. But and I understand, but people do lose their jobs corporate, at Xbox. Yeah, but corporate it, communications are also going to be very like, yeah. so controlled. Like They're not going to let anyone just talk. Yeah, but so. why is she not part of it? Mad Booty was part of it. Mad Booty she got just say speak. the exact same thing other people say, just in the maybe slightly but different but words. I think that's like, important, right? Because we have not, since she's hmm. taken over, aside from this particular situation, right? Since she's taken over, what has Sarah been put on that you can point to and say, oh, look at how she addressed this or made a mark here or did something here. They they put her up there and she's just been kind of the same Sarah Bond you've seen on Twitter um, who's yeah. saying things. I mean, it's nice. not a it's just not a she's not in like communicate she's not like a public facing communications person it's about what she does well, she, she's in the actual old company. position right before he went up right he was in charge of xbox before they acquired bethesda and and Activision. it's, it's a newer it was... one that's takes what phil was doing and sort of splintered it off into like you know multiple roles she is in the she's in a very different area yeah, so than she, this she and she it's handles, not public well, she's facing. wearing a lot of hats i will say that yes yeah. I mean, listen. Uh, they, we, they've got we, their they've got their marketing and PR team to write most of Phil and you know, or to go over with a fine tooth comb Phil and Matt's statements, and that those are very touched up by legal and stuff. Like they're just they're limit they limit talk in situations like this severely. Yeah, that's probably what it comes down to. No, but it's it it, it listen. It, it's a good question. Um, like I said, I I think that she's the right person for the job. I think ultimately she is going to take over for Phil been saying that for a long time when phil decides he's done this long enough she is going to take over his position 
Uh, and, and obviously she's moved up the ranks because she's talented. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I, I do I, I do have to say that I, I see what, where C Money is coming from because outside of her normal tweets, we don't I haven't seen anything, but I'm not I honestly I have not been actively looking. This situation is, and I Jesse's onto something when it comes to layoffs, they are very finite on who is making who the talking heads are, so to speak. And I think it's Phil, and obviously it's it's Mike because Mike is leaving today. Says so his last day. Uh, when Lulu announced that she was leaving, uh, I think her last day is uh, t- the twenty sixth. I think it's tomorrow, actually, or it may even be today. Yeah, I think I actually think it is today, as a matter of fact. So you know, she announced her uh, her her leaving the the, the uh, her position le- at the end of last year. So she she already knew that this was coming, which is sad. And again, anyone losing their job is is um, is concerning. That that's the bottom line. That's why we are talking about this. Before I bring Jesse uh, into the conversation, got to thank a couple of people here. EJ Jackson, a generous friend of this channel and the community, folks. He has dropped a Prince of Persia worldwide code in there. EJ, brother, that is incredibly generous of you. Hopefully, someone that didn't have the game got it. And please, by all means, thank this man because he does this quite often. He did it last year quite a few times and the generosity is is unrivaled. So thank you so much, EJ. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, Eric83 drops a very generous $2 super chat and says, damage control, keep the same energy both ways. Brother, I appreciate the generosity, Eric. I I don't get it. I don't think anyone here has damage controlled at all. We are people, uh, and we are talking about other people, I think, in a proper manner. No one's making excuses for a three trillion dollar company, um, and like I said in my opening, it makes it sting even more because they just announced that they are the number one uh, revenue company in the world. Uh, so yeah, this just kind of sucks. So no one is making any excuses. Uh, I'm not saying no, no one's saying, oh, you know, just business is business. But listen, I've been pretty negative. Uh, yeah, you've been negative. <laughs> I think uh, C Money's been fair. And, 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 and I mean, I'm not and, gonna. Listen, I I understand if at the end of the day you could be emotional about the shit. That's cool. That doesn't change anything. I'm not exactly. I'm not, I said that I I said thoughts and prayers for the people affected, right? But the rationale is just emotional, and business doesn't have emotion. Uh, bis- a business, business has is not to make sense. That's, that's and you know what? Correct. If they yes. had to close their doors and shut everybody out, and everybody lost their jobs, then that would be a travesty, right? So in order for them to keep moving in the direction that they have to as a business, they have to do what they have to do. So yes. as much as we want to make it a, a, a thing, I get it. I feel bad for those people for sure. Let's not act, especially when you have n- no knowledge on the situation. You don't have to live that life. You don't have to do those things. You don't have to make those decisions. Those decisions are real, whether you're a, a trillion dollar company or a smaller business. You have to do what's right for the business because at the end of the day, you're in charge of paying for people's salary. You're in charge of other people's families. And if one part of it has to take a hit because it's what's best for the business to move forward, then that's what you're going to do. If you think otherwise, you just don't understand it. And that's just what it is. And you could cry all you want, but that's just the reality of it. But he, and, and, and he's I, a thousand percent right. Listen, at, at the end of the day, what, what, no one's saying they're going to close their doors and no one's saying this is right. But like I, other people have done this just recently, i.e. Sony and Bungie, and we gave them the same shit, right? We gave them the same, the same, same business. And the way that Sony did it, like cowards, is they made Bungie do it, right? Instead of putting their name on it. So I'm just saying, Uh, real quick, Highlander Double O One drops an additional two dollar super chat and says, in Japan. There is a high suicide rate in business. Yeah, that, that, that as well as Korea as well. Um, there is a ridiculous high a rate of suicide because of uh, considering yourself to be failing if you lose a job in this in, in that Asian market. It's it's scary. It's scary. Uh, BT Maverick seven oh seven drops an outstanding, very generous five dollar. Super Chat and says, at least Xbox Microsoft, and Microsoft is putting their name on behind the layoffs. Uh, see, I just said it. Unlike Sony, didn't do that where they when they laid off Bungie employees. Thank you, guys, always. Well, thank you, brother, and we're on the same uh, wavelength. 
Uh, Sir X Men, generous friend of the program, drops an outstanding five dollar super chat and says, "People are stupid. He's just leaving Blizzard. He might be going to be a CEO of Activision. Why don't they read between the lines? You're being fooled." No, I mean he's going somewhere else. He obviously knew this was happening. I don't think that he woke up, you know, yesterday and was like, "Hey, Mike, come into the office. We got to have a talk." And he found yeah, out he wouldn't I, say I, already worked 20 years with Microsoft just yeah. to then go work for for Activision. Right. No, I, <laughs> I don't think he's working again. for Activision. I think that he's leaving the Microsoft business as a whole. Uh, you got to also understand all of these C level executives like Lulu. And again, this and, 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 and Mike, they're not making light of this. They had massive investments in uh, uh yeah, in this ABK deal. Out. And they cashed out, and I'm sure that they are not worried about their monies. Now, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that they had investments. Now, I don't know about the other 1,900 people. I don't know, and I'm not going to even pretend to uh, to, to know or Dude, understand. Michael is going to go get a dope ass job somewhere else where yeah. he has the potential to make meaningful change and move up. He is part of a massive cog at 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 blizzard and activision and and xbox microsoft is huge and they already put someone above him he's not taking matt booty's spot it's not happening so if my man wants to move up in life because he's a relatively young guy he wants to see where he's gonna go he has a lot of ambition he's gonna do it matt booty matt booty's fine he's happy with what he is and he is already been uplifted to where he's gonna go that he has no problem with his situation but a person like mikey barra who has clear ambition is going to want to go somewhere where he can move up. That's what business people do. It's not a, Oh my God, any of this bullshit. He, he sees the place that he's at. He knows what's going on. He's not going to have an opportunity to be pushed forward. And his position as the president does not mean the same thing it did before the studio got purchased. That's just what it is. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you're da- you're a thousand percent correct, uh, and I love it. I love the, uh, the candidness. Uh, 800 people in the chat here, folks. Big thank you to having that many people here on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, I want to say uh, if you are finding the channel for the first time, I'd ask that you, if you like the banter, because uh, obviously we come here to have fun, but this is one of those absolutely. days where there's not a lot of laughter. There is not a lot of fun because we are covering a very, a very serious uh, situation and we're going to handle it like you would expect adults um, please consider subscribing to the channel i do live content monday through friday uh, all different panels all different shows but you know what we don't hate monger and we don't sell you on clickbait to get you to click like and sub you come here we give you the information we are very i'm very detailed and you ask anyone that comes in and, and has been a guest on this show or is a regular panel member my show notes are ridiculous and that's because I take this shit super serious. Um, and I read you and I bring you the numbers. And, and occasionally I get it wrong. Like I, I got it wrong on Monday. I said that that it was only uh, 700000 to make uh, Power World when I read the number. I read it wrong live on the air. It was under $7 million. And what did I do the next day? Like a professional came up and said, hey, folks, correction, I got it wrong. And that's what you get here. Uh, real quick before we bring in Jesse, uh, two more super chats. Uh, Rain G4, generous friend of the program, drops an outstanding five dollar super chat and says, "I think Mike didn't want to call a grown man, Mister Booty, aka I'm adding that <laughs> Peaches, as he's known in these streets. Uh, your baby, your baby father uh, is drops a very generous five dollar." Super chat. Welcome back, brother. Great to see you here. He says, I would like to see Sarah speak more directly to the fan base besides her usual throwaway tweets. Phil's yes. old role was split, was split between her and Matt. I yeah. I would like her to see. Yeah, I agree. I, I'd like to see yeah, absolutely her. should be yeah. out there, man. Yeah. Well, she that should. side went to Matt. That's why he's the one talking now. Like, yeah, the and more we kind of figured he was, quiet for, he was quiet for a long time. Uh, real quick, lastly, Sir X Man drops an additional two dollar super chat. And says it would be funny if he went to run Sony. I mean, you just never know; it's possible. Uh, Can you Jesse, imagine? let's let's get your hot take on Mike leaving. I, again, I I honestly did not see this coming. Um, I he's a he's a lifer. He was when he was with Xbox. Uh, he's Mister Blizzard. He said it in his his uh, his tweet uh, that I read live on the air. Uh, 
he this is the dream come true for him. I don't know what happened. I don't know what has changed. We're going to talk about the cancellation of their of their uh, survival game, which was being compared, you know, crazily enough to what Rare is working on with Everwild. I don't know if they were too similar, and maybe that's why they canceled it. Maybe it wasn't working out. I, I don't know. Maybe that was the reason why he was like, you know what? If I can't make these calls, I'm out. Uh, what are what are your takes from the message from Mike Ybarra? Um, I'm going to share a tweet that went up uh, in chat from someone who was working on the. Uh, oh, I'm not allowed to put tweets, but there is a tweet here. I'll I'll, I'll link it for you, boom, in private okay. chat. Yeah, you could read it verbatim. Um, that's that's fine. Yeah, I got. Yeah, it. so it's pretty much everyone that was working on Odyssey was fired at Blizzard. So it wasn't Holy just shit. redundant. It wasn't yes. just redundant business positions. It was actual creatives too, and I think a large reason for that is because. During the merger, wow! Activision Blizzard King was on the COVID hiring screen, went from ten thousand people to seventeen thousand people. So, um, it was like one one last poison pill gift from Bobby, where they almost doubled their sal- their uh, headcount. So, and in the long run, like it's it's not just redundancies and what are you going to do? It's they are also firing creatives too. It is it's a mix. It's very much both because when an entire team's game is canceled and they're all fired and there are people who are working on it that are on work visas that find out and now they've got very limited amount of time to stay in the country that they moved to like just all around it really sucks and it's not a microsoft evil thing it's a the way business works just sucks for employees thing in the country because they can't tell anyone ahead of time. You can't be like, oh, you're on a work visa. So, you know, you've got, what, uh, six weeks or something if we fire you. You're going to want to definitely start looking for another job. It's like they don't get to do that. And it just, I, I, I so hope. did they hire for that game? I mean, it seems well, they like hired, they, hired they nearly doubled their headcount. But that game has been in, in development for, for six many years. years and seemingly six years, gone Jesse. through. Yes. And with what uh, Schreier said that it had been rebooted recently. So it wasn't close okay. to coming out, like because I remember so Jez had they... said it was very close to coming out, and then but it's been rebooted. But yeah, it's it's that same thing, where like it's not all of these firings, and I, I know they love calling them layoffs, but people got fired. They're fired. In part they, they, because, they were fired. They, yeah. they were not laid off. They were fired. Listen, yeah. Jesse, I don't mean to cut well, you fired, off, brother, but fired I, means I, mm-hmm. that they're not going to get anything from it because they did something wrong. Fired means well, laid you're off. tossed yeah, yeah. out of here because of what you did. Layoff means we're letting people go, uh, because of uh, business, not because yeah. you personally did something horrible, but because we have to reduce our workforce. So you're going to get severance. You're going to get all these things. If I fire somebody, get the fuck out of my building. Yeah. You're fired because you did something wrong. So they didn't fire these people. They let them go. Let them go sure. means that they have benefits. They have all the things that come with it. Um, again, being fired is a whole different ball game. And you, 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 you run a business, so you completely understand that. And I'm glad. That, gl- uh, thank you for the clarifications, because you, you are correct. But listen, uh, Jesse, I, I'm gonna hand it back over to you in a hot second. Mm-hmm. I do want to read. My, yeah. Uh, but go ahead. Uh, well, I, I want to read uh, the the woman that you sent me the tweet. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, just for for clarification, folks, for context of the conversation, who is he? Who is she? Well, her name uh, on Twitter is uh, Quiet vfx uh she is a vfx artist previously with blizzard entertainment sony santa monica gearbox official and playful studios which uh is the play i believe playful did uh the fox game if i'm not mistaken um uh and she said opinions are her own and this is what she had to say confirming uh that what we literally what jesse just said The entire survival team just got laid off. I will be radio silent while I sort out uh, and feel my emotions before I figure out what's next. I love working on this project with my team. It was the best thing I've ever done in my career. I'm only sorry no one will get to see it. Uh, Again, just I'm I'm stunned, honestly. Uh, An entire team has been laid off that was working on this you know it wasn't a rumor it was a game in development and, and i got a couple of uh, a couple of dms that was in development for nearly six years 
Uh, and I did not know about the rebooting that you said that, that I can't see Jason Schreier because that pompous ass blocked me. And it's a badge of honor that I wear proudly. F that dot, that, that guy. Um, but it's fine. Uh, Jesse, please, by all means, continue. Um, what, do you, what are your thoughts on the cancellation yeah, about, of this game? Yeah, um, sucks. We, we, the, we always lack too much info to really know. So we don't know what state it was in, how far it was, what were the costs, what did they think of how it was going to do internally. Did they think it was, to, you know, because it's like the whole extraction shooter genre thing. Did they think survival is still going to be big by the time this even hits? We don't know. We don't know the the metrics they're looking at, the info they have, and it makes it so hard to understand. And when it comes to Mike and why he left, like we had story after story about how people really didn't like him in the company after some disastrous meetings. Um so I'm not shocked. I was surprised that he really seemed like he was he, he was publicly kind of cheerleading that he wanted to stay, and I never thought he yes, would. Yes, I, I remember that. Yes, I I, I heard yeah, that. Somebody yeah. put the somebody wrote it in the chat. I don't know, but he said that somebody that they're gonna have to carry him out or drag him out of there. Yes, yeah, he said that in November. He, that, he wanted to stay, but but this I, is what I'm telling you. It's yeah. clear something happened that when you he something happened that he did not think was gonna happen. He thought he was going to get more power. He thought something was going to come. And well, then they so, sat down, <clears throat> told him what was what. And then all of a sudden, it's like, all right, this doesn't work anymore for me. The way it went with Microsoft was he Phil got the job he wanted. Like, Phil became the head of Microsoft, the head of Xbox. And that was what Mike was going for. Mike eventually leaves, goes to Blizzard. Um, I think he knew the whole time. And it's like he was trying to get away from them. And now he's dragged right back in. Rod wasn't trying to get away so much as Rod just really loves Diablo and wanted to go work on it and make more money, most likely. Um, but for Mike, it was very much, uh, this is my dream job. I'm finally away. I didn't get what I wanted there. And now they're buying the freaking company I work for. And chances are they, there's still just a lot of lingering bad stuff. It doesn't even have to be anything new outside of the, the times we heard. And again, it's only, you know, you only get so much of a picture from inside leaks, but we heard he had some real disastrous meetings where people didn't like him and all this type of stuff. Also, I shared another link to you in the chat boom with a new big info about Xbox. Dude, this is not again. Yeah. It, what a what a day for news. Uh, and I have that actually Good in news. front of me. This Fantastic is big. News. Um, Apple has opened its app store to game streaming services. According to Andrew Webster, who writes for the verge, he says the likes of Xbox cloud gaming and GeForce now will no longer be restricted to web apps, meaning mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to natively download Xbox Game Pass app on your on your Apple phone and play that way without having to go through the, you know, the, the hoops and, and, and yo-yos, if you will. Yeah, um, these are worldwide. They also have changes in Europe only where they're allowing side loading and stuff because of the European Commission. Those are not worldwide, but this one is. Wow. So if you're That's in a... Europe, you can do alternative browser engines finally and side loading of apps. But even the side loading of apps, I think, have to be vetted by Apple because Apple's weird. Yeah, they sure are. This is why I don't have an Apple device. I am an Android dude. Um, we're probably going to cover this uh, in detail because I have to read the story and I want to see what mm -hmm. uh, what the consensus is. But um, anything else that uh, that you'd like to add? um jesse to um the cancellation of the unknown name survival game yeah i think you all we ever had was project odyssey Odyssey, um, yes. but yes yeah, yeah most i can think of is they're all microsoft is a very data driven company and it's all about return on investment and yep. what is the game looking like how much is going to cost to finish all these things um matt's blog post about it or his internal memo about it said they were moving people over to other teams so it's also confusing to hear that they fired everyone it's probably something in between you never know like when somebody somebody working there and they just lost their job I, I will trust them when they say the whole team was fired so maybe the people that are being moved are people that weren't directly on the only odyssey team they were helping it because i mean that's just a big thing within the company like you've got tons of different teams, but the dedicated Odyssey team seems like they were completely wiped out, which sucks ass. Um, yeah, it's that's... it's sad because it was their first new IP since Overwatch, which was built off the back of a dead MMO Project Titan. Like it's it's been a very long time, and I love Diablo Four, and World of Warcraft supposedly been a lot better lately. But um, I'm hoping that. 
And I hope hopefully those people land on their feet, especially those who really need to quickly. And uh, they're, they're in an area with a lot of companies. But again, most of those companies have been firing people nonstop. Yeah. So my, my main hope would be I hope this actually does just lead to healthier business practices overall for Blizzard because it has been so bad for them for a long yeah, time. Yeah, it, it has. It has been for, for, for quite, I mean, again, Activision Blizzard, they've made a lot of money, but they've also uh, done some heinous shit, uh, you know, and obviously, you know, uh, they're, 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 they're st they just finished selling a bunch of lawsuits for everything that Bobby K allowed to happen while he was the boss. Um, and uh, that included sexual misconduct and uh, a whole bunch of other of real heinous things. Um, and that's been, you know, that's that's getting cleared up as we speak. That doesn't make any of this any easier, folks. Here we are, 1,900 people today have lost their jobs, and it sucks. Um, it, it really does. Uh, but nice. again, listen, I, I think we I think we all covered it as uh, you would expect. Um, I normally this is a like 70 ish minute uh, show, but because we have a guest. I'm gonna I'm gonna extend it probably another uh, you know another 20 25 minutes if if, if both C Money and Jesse don't mind I yeah, do want to I, I do want to talk about the other side of the uh, of the coin and again I'm glad that we covered this first uh, I gotta talk about Pal World folks and I know that maybe you're getting sick of it but I think that it is a story that is um, re and again it's the other side of the coin we're ha we have tragedy. Where 1,900 people lost their jobs, we don't agree with it. We understand it's business, but it still sucks. No one's making excuses. Uh, I think, like I said earlier, and I said it twice, I'll say it a third time. I think it really is more pointed and stings even more when when Microsoft just announced that they have made uh, a they're a three trillion dollar company. I, I I you know it sucks that you land. Yeah, they'll be and it's going to get exasperated on the 30th or 29th whenever they're doing their quarterly reports cuz uh, they fire I think that's coming out. Yeah, they yeah. fire people now because it adds to the quarterlies that make shareholders happy. It's the same thing that happened last year. Yep. Yep, it's it's uh it's it just sucks. Uh listen. Uh I want to talk about it because yesterday evening we got another tweet uh confirming that 8 million copies have been sold on Steam. And of course, you know, I put a tweet out there congratulating the team as I think everyone should. It's it's a Goliath it, 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 it's a Goliath, you know, kind of situation. They were a small indie team that started with four people, moved it up to 50, and they have sold more than Spider-Man 2 on a on a shoestring budget. It's something to that we should all be celebrating whether it's your game or it's not. But before we get to that one, folks, talking about small, Double Barrel Gaming, we're 14.1K strong, but we're still considered relatively small in the, the vast universe of YouTube. Uh, and in doing so, we have made some headways and we have partnered with several companies over the course of the six years that we've been doing this. Um, and one of the companies that my wife and I really looked at and wanted to support was the Valari Gaming Pillow Company. And I say that because not only do I use their product personally, um, they are also a mom and pop organization out of Dubai. And, uh, you know, uh, I, they reached out to me. Uh, and, you know, again, I don't immediately jump on partnerships. I've turned down hundreds and I've only accepted only a handful because, A, I'm not whoring out this brand. And B, I'm not going to sell someone else's product if I'm not going to use it. So they sent me a pillow, uh, and and, and uh, I used it, and I was like, "Wow, you know, for someone who has back back surgery like I had, it this thing really works." Um, the one that I currently use is the one that was gifted to me by King David himself of the Iron Lord podcast, and it is a a, a, a branded Iron Lord pillow. I freaking love it, and it's phenomenal. Um, it keeps my posture up. It doesn't keep me hunched over. I, I rest my hands with the controller on it, and it's it just seems to do the job, and I'm in, never in any back pain. Uh, so what I decided to do was ra rather read from a cue card, which I don't like doing. I had the incredibly talented Sean Labrie actually make a commercial, which I'm going to play for you now. It's about 34 seconds long, uh, and I will tell you in advance, if you are considering buying one of these pillows, 
Uh, a, they work, and B, if you, if you do buy one, please use the code DBG15 at checkout, and you'll get 15% off of your entire order. Please check out the commercial. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, obviously, use the code DBG15 at checkout, and you'll save 15% uh, off of your entire order. A big thank you to, once again, for, for uh, to the Valari Gaming Pillow Company for reaching out to Double Barrel Gaming and taking a chance on a small channel. And uh, all we want to do is do the right thing by them. And obviously, if the product wasn't good, I would not be selling it because, like I said, I've we've gotten hundreds, and I mean that, hundreds of offers uh, we've only accepted a few uh, because, again, A, uh, we're not whoring out the brand. We're not going to do that. I'm sorry. And B, uh, the, the product actually has to work for me to sell it because I won't I won't do that. Uh, uh, C-Money, look, in the last uh, – now, we're coming up almost on a week since the release of, of this incredible game by a studio that is uh, – relatively tiny pow world has taken over the zeitgeist conversation in gaming it is uh it is an incredible story it is one that every day since the release of this game we have seen tweets and we have just confirmed as of last evening they have sold eight million, million copies but see People wonder and people ask, and I and I, I had to block a couple of people because you know people were calling me a clown for what I'm about to say, and I'm like, clown? The the stats don't lie, folks. Just look it up. Be be, be a person and look it up online. You can't go wrong with the with the correct information. Right. We learned, see, money that people were like, well, you know, boom, it's only Steam. You shouldn't be prepping up Xbox. Shut up, because guess right. what happened yesterday, see, money. What happened yesterday is that this game, Pal World, overtook the number one spot that was held by who? Freaking Fortnite. Fortnite. The number one spot is now in the warm grasp of Pal World. So what does that say? That says that people are playing and buying it on Xbox. Now, we don't have the exact numbers, but I think that that number in itself is impressive enough to say that it dethroned whether it's still number one or number two, and they're fighting it out as we speak, it dethrones Fortnite. That is a big freaking deal, and that's why this game, as an Xbox console exclusive, is massive. Let's break Facts. this down, see money Man, this game, listen, I, I know there's a lot of people who have tried it and don't like it, right? That's cool. I completely understand that. But I got to tell you, this shit nails it. I'm not like I'm not a survival game player. Like I just I don't care for them. You know, Ark, you know, I'm I'm always I tried it, you know, I'm always willing to try something, but like they're just not my cup of tea, man. Like I don't want to be stressing about feeding somebody or doing all that shit all the time. I just want to play the game. But I, I gotta tell you, man, Power World nails it. Nails it, dude. Like they just they get it, they make it where people who are not super you can shut up all the settings and all that i'm gonna do that yeah. i'm shutting up everything everything yeah it's it's amazing it's so good uh we love it you know me and doodle have been playing it like crazy um really just having a blast really really enjoying it um i mean listen this is shit man this is a huge deal that they got in on this game day one day one Remember, yeah. this is you. The last time they did something like this, they weren't day one, but they were day one in console, which is was Pub, PUBG, right? That was the last game to literally take, you know, the 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 air out of the room for everything else, 
because it was all anybody can think about or talk about. And it was only on PC, right? And then uh, basically a year into it, Xbox finally got them to launch on Xbox and there was a console exclusive. And that was huge for Xbox. Take that and look at how big of a difference it makes being there day one. Being there day one where, it yes, we're seeing all the Steam numbers. That's great. But guess what that means, man? If there's 8 million people playing on Steam and there's so much love being, you know, talked about with this game, like people are sweating this game, obsessed with this game, putting videos out, doing all this fun stuff. Like people are going to see that. And this is the type of game that'll make casuals or, you know, PlayStation players, not the ponies, but the casuals who own it. They're going to take a second look. They're going to come over. I saw a video on Twitter of this lady who um, who saw Power World, wanted to play Power World. She has a MacBook, and she went ahead and said, all right, I'm going to do the deal and try Game Pass so that I can play Power World. And she did the deal, and then she looked at the rest of Game Pass and saw how amazing all the other games were in there. And now this is what she's going to be keeping. She's going to be keeping Game Pass going forward, not only for Power World, but to play all these other things. This is what a big game can do. And this is why you see so many people in the Xbox community who are who are hardcore, right? Who are people who want to see Xbox do big things and want to see Xbox do well. They're saying that Phil needs to lock this up. They need to get on this because they were day one and this game is not technically released yet it's released as a preview game but it does not have his 1.0 version where it's out get on this so that when you do drop this game as a 1.0 it is an xbox game it's exclusive as a console uh exclusive and dude you you have the potential to be huge this can literally we were just talking about it uh in the green room how this can be this can pass PUBG, bro like it can go it's on its way dude it's it's, it's on its, on its, it's way. on its way it's about seven hundred thousand away from it and i say but that's a lot of people but dude uh i don't know what else to say i mean uh pal world tweeted this uh, of course and obviously this just comes away of bucky who is a community manager there it says yep. Power World has sold over 8 million copies in less than six days. Thank you very Crazy. much. As stated Crazy. previously, we continue to work at full speed on addressing bugs and issues. Once again, thank you for your, your support. Hashtag pocket pair. Um, dude, it's, it's, I didn't know it was going to get, I don't think they knew it was going to get this mm-hmm. big, Ooh, honestly. Except for the dude who said, okay, it's a game pass. He was like, all right. This, I think this would be good. <laughs> like that guy, that guy's like, I see something here. Well, but you know what's interesting? I I don't know. I, I I think this Sarah Bond might have been directly involved in this because what's interesting, C Money, uh, is right before the direct last week, we learned early that week, I think it was Monday, if I'm not mistaken, folks, that Pow World was dropping into Xbox Game Pass day and date that Friday. Nope, right before a the day direct. after, which again, so that's this was done rather quickly. And again, Craftopia, which is their game prior to this, did launch into Game Pass in preview as well, and it did okay. This is a phenomenon, dude. This is just it is bonkers. It is this is lightning in a bottle. And yep. you know, if if I'm pow, if I'm pocket pair, the people who make this, you know, as dope as it is to look at this and be like wow like we we we're rich right like this is we just changed our whole lives with this game you know they also have to look at craftopia and realize that that's not guaranteed every time they do something right and you know how long is this game going to stay hot well i could tell you right now if xbox owned it it's a game that can stay hot for a very very long time because they can put the resource behind it they can keep spreading it out at, on its own, you know, it's going to be a big thing for a long time, but look at PUBG, right? PUBG is now sitting back. It's doing good, but it's sitting back, right? These are the situations that make exclusives different than other games, right? When it's exclusive, 
there's a there's a force behind it, right? There's a backing that you know a, a team that says we love this game, we want to pump this game forward, we want to move it forward. It's not just up to the developers and what they're willing to spend to do it, right? And I think that it it will be a huge win to get this game. It's it's phenomenal. Um, they're making like like they're just crushing records dude like it's so impressive honestly when we first saw it i did not i did not look at this game and think that it was going to be some huge thing i was like oh shit look they're literally stealing pokemon and putting it with guns but it turns out it's not even that like they did so much more with it than any other person could have thought of like i did not know that this was going to be this type of game um but it really is phenomenal man they did a big thing and uh you know if phil and Sarah and Booty are listening. Come on, man. Do the right thing. <laughs> Make the right move. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know if an acquisition is necessary. I, I, I personally, and I talked about this last night on Primetime Gaming, and Jesse, I don't know if you feel the same way. I kind of, I, I don't want to suggest that they're sitting on their hands. This is one of those situations where, okay, so maybe it, it, it's not going to move in japan as much as let's say for instance here because right here in america it's 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 cooking uh because japan is you know they're they're big fans of nintendo and they may there was um there was a pie chart that came out i think it's 35 percent china so 35 percent china two percent japan is actually a heck a heck of a lot for japan because their population is tiny in comparison so Ah, okay pretty popular there there you go uh real quick folks on a side tangent Tom Warren literally tweeted seconds ago uh, a statement from Matt Booty regarding what happened today, and more specifically, Mike Ybarra. I want to read that for you, and then Jesse will go right back to you with uh, uh, with Pocket Pair and the lightning in the bottle that C Money and I have been uh, talking about. He says this, in addition to the events today, Mike Ybarra and I have been discussing his future and some of his personal passions for quite some time. As many of you know, Mike previously spent more than 20 years at Microsoft. Now that he has seen the acquisition through as Blizzard's president, he has decided to leave the company. Wink, wink. Uh, wink, wink, I guess. You know, I mean, that that's he's saying that he, that, you know, and, and um, okay, so hold on. Let me get into my uh, DM. Shout out to uh, Cast360X, who just tweeted, who, do, who DM'd me a story uh regarding uh from the verge and uh about some of the employees on this on, on this uh this survival game uh and this this is what oh, this is a quote from that uh today's actions affect multiple teams within blizzard and this comes from the way of matt booty by the way i'm sorry i didn't say that today's actions affect multiple teams within blizzard including development teams sharing service organizations and corporate functions Uh, Matt Booty, head of Xbox Game Studios, said in a note to staff as part of this focus, Blizzard is ending development on its survival game project and will be shifting some of these people, uh, some of the people working on on it to one of several promising new projects Blizzard has in the early stages of development, though no particular number was added. So we don't know how many. Uh, were on this team. I don't recall reading that, and we don't know how many of those team members are being, you know, obviously uh, laid off, uh, and some people being shifted to other other positions on other Blizzard games. We don't have the number, but I just wanted to add some of that for context because literally it just dropped into my box, and and of course um, Tom Warren literally just tweeted it. Uh, but kind of just merging back over to. Uh, uh, Pocket Pair, a uh, small developer out of Japan. Uh, again, started with four people. They are upwards of 50 people now. Um, Jesse, what, what are your thoughts on this phenomenon? Uh, and do you agree with me and see money where we want to see Microsoft potentially, uh, if they want to move consoles, they want to move Game Pass, they, they need to get out there and start banging the drum. I, I, I don't know how long it takes for a trillion dollar company to turn on a dime but this is a this is a big deal, dude. It's been it it, it, was, it game's only out six days and it sold eight million copies. I don't know the numbers of sales on Xbox. I don't know how many people downloaded it via Xbox Game Pass and, and Game Pass PC. 
But for it to take the number one spot of Fortnite, someone actually said it in the chat. Let me see if I have it here. But I have them highlighted. Damn it, I don't think I did. They uh, they said something to the effect of Fortnite is free to play without Game Pass. This overtaking it, it's it's a big deal. I, I, what are your thoughts, uh, Jesse? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> they. I definitely do think they have started um, much more quickly green lighting patches. I got another one today that's three in like two and a half days. Um, just proper support to get feature parity as quick as they can, I think, is the, the only thing they really have to do because this game is marketing itself in a way that us old guys aren't used to. Um, the TikTok generation, like the actual <laughs> thing to move and push games isn't just traditional marketing like we're used to, especially for games in this genre, which are pushed so much more by influencers and streamers and uh, social media than they are by commercials or, or other things. So g having it on Game Pass, giving it the higher priority in the um, queue for uh, when Christ, I can't remember the freaking term. Um, but for getting patches done more quickly, because it's it's already pretty damn close to the Steam version. Now the main thing is uh, just getting the dedicated server support and crossplay going. So if they can potentially give them some sort of support for that, um, I think that's the main thing. It's it's going to own. It's not going to be on other systems for a long time for the simple fact that the other systems do not have as easy to use of an early access program as Microsoft and Steam do. Uh, it will eventually go everywhere. It'll be on the, depending on the size of the team, which is probably going to grow now that they've made their budget back about 40 times over. Um, it's going to be everywhere eventually, but it's going to be in early access for a very long time when it's at its biggest. So I don't, I don't think they have to do any, try and get any exclusivity contracts or anything like that. It's just, it's a de facto exclusive in the way that Baldur's Gate 3 was for a little bit, where I think Larian was like, yep, yeah, we can get three distinct launches out of this. So why not wait on the, uh, the Xbox version? Because we get a big Steam launch, get a big PlayStation launch, get a big Xbox launch, and avoid most other big game launches on Xbox. So... Um, I've really enjoyed it. I did an impressions piece uh, that I, I played it a bunch over the weekend. Uh, I haven't gotten to play it much now because I'm I'm working on a review for a game coming out. Sadly, still not Suicide Squad. As far as I know, nobody has that game. I'm really curious when that even shows up at this point. Um, or if it shows up early because it's an always online thing. And if they don't have the servers ready to go, you can't actually play it anyways. But yeah, now Power World is really good. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. I've been happy to see all of the uh, quick patchwork that they've gotten through the search process. And I think that'll just be the main thing. Just get it into parity with Steam so everyone can play together and spend a bunch of money to have their 32-player servers. I do think people are going to think they get to do that for free, and I don't think you get to do that for free. I think you have to pay. I mean, it's it, listen, it, 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 if it matters to you, then you don't mind paying. This is this has mm -hmm. become a norm on PC. This has been a big again. I, I, I play on Xbox and uh, I don't know how, how, how anyone else is playing it. I'm shutting everything off. Like, some I got a lot of DMs like, hey, boom, you know, you can shut off the eating and the and and, and I'm like, I'm shutting everything off. I just want to play the game. I, I don't yeah. want to do survival. Stuff. It's, it's nice that they bag. give you so many customization options yes. to just make it as hard or as easy as you want. I love it. I love it. I can't wait. I can't and even wait. as Listen base, to, uh, as a normal survival game, it's pretty easy compared to most, which is good. Yeah. I, I, I look. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna age myself because you got you folks know I'm 53. Like I I was running around for like two hours in the line cloth, and I'm like, why is it dark? I can't freaking see anything. Oh, I have to I have to make a torch. Gotta make a torch, bro. And it's like what the. Okay, this is well over the mohawk. It's fine. I'm old. What can I say? I'm definitely gonna play it. Um, I, I'm I'm excited. Listen, folks, we went a pinch over what we normally do for this particular show. The shows are usually 75 minutes, 80 minutes, give or take. Uh, we had breaking news to open up the show. Obviously we're closing on even bigger news. If you, if you've been following the, you know, the socials, how world 8 million sold on steam. It is a few hundred thousand away uh, concurrent players from dethroning uh, 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 PUBG, which has been, and this is all time. This isn't like a week or a month. This is all time. Uh, they they took out CS:GO 2, which was you know the number two spot. This I think is a really big deal. What's PUBG that? was like 3.2. 
Three point two million. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They've so gotten to so two point so zero one. So okay, so so maybe it's a little bit over a million still. It, it it's yeah. going to be interesting to see. Uh, thanks for the correction, Jesse. Uh, if mm-hmm. they can do it, uh, they're at the number two spot. Not bad, the silver medal, but I'm sure that this it has a lot more legs. More people are finding it. More people are playing it. More people are loving it. I have to get. I have to get away from this game. This game in front of you right now has stolen my life. Just like Vampire Survivors, it's all I want to play. It's simple. It's fun. And I don't get a lot of time because I do five shows a week. So when I do have some spare time, I don't know if I want to build an axe. You know what I'm saying? So I'll get to it eventually. But let's get to the outro. Oh, hey, again. boom. Build yes, the axe. It's yeah. worth it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it. You know, it's funny. I actually was chopping... I was hitting the 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 the, uh, the rocks with an axe, like a knucklehead, and I was like, I was getting like one little piece, two. Like, uh, what? Why, pickaxe, what's bro? happening? I built the 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 pickaxe, and I was like, whoa, gotcha. what a what a. <laughs> Listen, there's no better feeling than when you look at your, but you just stand in the corner of your base, right, and you just look at it, and you see all of the pals that you have working and i got a lamb like that's the first one i grabbed i got the, the lamb shit. the lamb character oh yeah. man there's so many cool things i just got the i could fly i could I have my oh, bird nice. and i have a saddle for the bird so now i can fly all over the goddamn world it's beautiful that's dope yeah shout Thank out you. to epic treasure she's been putting out amazing videos of course j rock as well that, that they have skyrocket they have they have castles yeah, they, they have, have like big crazy. mansions they're yeah, flying they on everything i'm like time. How long have they been playing? Like this is crazy. Listen, and you got those groups. Uh, you can get through stuff real quick. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to get into this. I, I again, I, I've been talking about it for the last four days. I just haven't been playing a lot of it, to be honest with you, because again, time is of the essence. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, real quick, you drops a very generous five pound super chat and says, "Has there been any more news on these type uh, on the type of roles?" I'm hearing that's mostly back office staff, marketing slash legal. It still sucks. Jesse, do you sleep? And I'm going to say no. I don't hmm. think Jesse does actually sleep. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Just not enough. Um, uh, Jez <laughs> just tweeted out that the entire like internal customer support structure was fired, and they're outsourcing it. Oh, to cut wow. Costs. Yeah, that Matt Boone they had- memo, if you read the whole thing, like he goes into where some of the, the details. The yeah, I, I have, yeah, I have it in front of me. There. I just obviously I have to. I got a chance to read it. Uh, lastly, Laburn98 drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, in Phil's memo, he asked employees to treat the parting colleagues with respect and compassion. Did they think that some may uh, celebrate uh, certain celebrate. layoffs or uh, celebrate uh, certain layoffs? I he kn- in those He knows those memos go public. So half the time he's writing it for the public, too. So uh, yeah, yeah, it makes that makes sense. That's the corporal speak that you. It were. was it was public immediately after he sent yes. it. Yeah, it sure was. Happen every the, time. Minute, the minute it was written, I'm sure it was out there, and that's what. Yeah, that again, there's no out. such thing as an eternal memo anymore. They know no, that he's, when he's know. writing it, he's writing it for the public, um, just in the flavor of an internal memo. That's all. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, again, it's, it's the corporal speak that you talked about. Jesse, come on, let's sell the brand of Xbox era. Uh, you guys have been doing an amazing job over there. The growth has been incredible. Uh, we're we're on the road to 25k. 25k, uh, one yeah, k to go. Well, well, well earned. Well earned. Well deserved. You guys, John, nope. special Nick, yourself, and the team doing an Not incredible so much job. Nick. Well, I mean, I have to give Nick credit because I, I, I'm a Nick fan. I, I, I really am, and not the New York Knicks. I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, special <laughs> Nick. I'm a big fan of his work, uh, and uh, he, he, he gets it right a lot. So I, I'm a big fan. But I know you have to give him, the, uh, you have to give him the business. Sell the brand of the Xbox era. Where can people subscribe to help you get to 25K? And more importantly, uh, Jesse, where can people follow you on social media? So we're just xboxera.com. You can find everything there, youtube.com forward slash Xbox era. Xbox era pretty much everywhere except for Twitch, which we don't really use much anymore. I am JJS Norse on Twitch or Twitter, which I don't use that often, but uh, I have used it quite a bit today. Um, but yeah, xboxera.com. It's our site. We've got forums. We've got day one, which is like a whole Game Pass repository, which automatically pulls everything. 
Um, the forums are pretty good for the most part. You know, we can't can't control what people say, and we, we have spillover from some of the shittier places at times. But overall, it's pretty good. But YouTube.com forward slash Xbox era is the main place for our uh, video content. And if you really like what we do, it's Patreon.com forward slash Xbox nice. era so that we can make this into a real company for at least two or yep. three of us. Yeah, I love again. Love what you guys are doing. Uh, enjoy the work. Uh, Got to get back onto the uh, onto the podcast at some point. Join John, Special Nick, and yourself, and uh, chop episode two hundred coming up next month. Holy matrimony! That's right. That's, that's very exciting. Uh, wow. We had Phil on one hundred. I don't know if we'll get him for two hundred. We'll see. Well, I mean, listen, you never know. You got him for one, so maybe not. Maybe two. Uh, but the good good stuff all around. Um, see money. Let's let's sell your brand, kind sir. Obviously, you do a show. Uh, quite a few shows actually during the week, uh, but the main the main one is you, a him, her, and a guest, which is one of my favorites. Uh, you bring people in like the Black Viking, which you had just the other day, and shout out to that team yeah. who have now officially hit one thousand subscribers, as well as being partnered with uh, with YouTube. We're big we're big fans of what Black Skellington the Black Viking and Supernova are doing on a weekly basis. But you, my friend, uh, do have an amazing show with your wife that you do several times a week. And you also bring your other kids involved. Talk about that, man. It's in a very unusual but fun program that you should definitely be subscribed to. Sell it. And again, I did not see her in the chat, but if Doodle, Doodle is there, Darling, great for you. Thank you so much for being here. And again, love the work that you are doing. She has taken over the a title away from C Money of Pony Smasher. Sell the brand, brother. Talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, uh, boom, thank you so much, brother. You know, uh, love being on the show. Appreciate you having me here. Uh, shout out to Jesse. First time doing a podcast with him, man. That was cool. Appreciate you, brother. Love uh love what you guys are doing. Why thank you. Xbox it was a lot of fun. Era. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, I am C Money Forever on Twitter. Uh, if you would like to come and have a fun time, you know, just living in the life of some slander every once in a while, it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, but definitely check us out there. Uh, my wife is Doodle to be free. Um, also follow her there. Um, on YouTube, our channel is called On Point for Gamers. Um, I'm actually gonna throw the uh link yeah drop it right in there brother chat here so you can uh you know drop us a sub we just passed uh 12 wait yes 12 did i press 12 yeah 12.1 12 12.1 <laughs> 12 uh okay uh subs over there you know we are we are on the road to 13 man that's we are are looking for that uh is it 12 wait wait, wait. What are our subscribers? Are we at 12? Boom. Do you remember? I'm pretty sure it was 12. Yes. Pretty sure it was 12. Pretty yes. sure it was 12. Yeah, yeah. 12.1. Um, so yeah, so definitely come and check us out. We do four shows a week. Um, we have uh four. Did my oh okay? I just my, my screen just froze. Uh we do four shows a week. We have um what's today? Today's Thursday. Tomorrow is our uh, night show called uh, The Night Shift. Let's Talk Gaming. Yep. Um, it's at 6 p.m. Eastern time. That's with me, Doodle, and that's our guest show where we have guests. Uh, this week, we have three guests. Uh, we actually have Silent Cypher, Karim Jovian, and Hargeet Shani. Oh, wow. What, a, gonna, what um, a great cast, dude. Holy cow. Yeah, it's going to be a, a really, really fun show. Um, so definitely come and check it out. Um, then we have one of our favorite shows, which is our Sunday morning show. Uh, it's at 10 a.m. Eastern Times called Morning Quest with Doodle and C Money, um, where, you know, we talk about whatever, you know, we want to talk about, um, talk some slander if need be. And it's really a chat heavy show. Like we have a great time, you know, just chilling with the chat. Um, uh, you know, a lot of. I see a lot of our homies in here now. Um, we just get to rock out. It's a fun time. Um, then we have her, him, and a guest on Tuesdays. It's typically at 7 p.m. Eastern time. This past week, we just had uh, the Black Viking on, which was really, really dope. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, but we will be having our homie, Retri, who will be our guest on Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so definitely come and check that out. And this is the end of the month. 
So we normally have our gaming podcast on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern time called On Point, the gaming podcast. But we do a fun show at the end of every single month called the end of the month block party where it's myself, Doodle, Madman, and we get, you know, a group of our, you know, favorite, you know, people on YouTube, uh, you know, this particular month we have the homie um king david coming through we have black viking making a return we have uh elite gaming guru from gamers initiative podcast which is super nice. dope and we have randall thor 19 who's gonna wow be pa- power power that's lot, that's, that's so lot. it's gonna be a dope dope show definitely come check it out we obviously have a shit ton to talk about from this yeah. month <laughs> that passed you so. want one more thing to talk about that i just yeah. saw is that uh yeah. jess Corden tweeted xbox is fired the teams that are in charge of getting physical games made and released yes oh so physical oh. games look like they're going to be out we're going to we're going to talk about that tomorrow morning yep. to open up so X, uh, the uh the breakfast with boom podcast tomorrow 10 a.m eastern standard time uh, News we're never stops. Money. Uh, that's again another big topic. You have a powerful yep. lineup for the end of month show, which I absolutely love. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of big yeah, names uh, showing up, and uh, it's it's a great time. So please continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that that's it, man. Those are our four shows that we do every single week. Uh, we would love for you to come check it out. I mean, we are an Xbox focused uh podcasts um i think you hear boom uh give us the title of pony smashers doodle does not fuck around she is dark doodle at certain times um but definitely come check it out man i i would say it's not for you know if if you lean on the pony side of things you probably want to stay clear but outside of that yeah come check us out man we have a good time it's fun we appreciate you all well, listen, again, thank you so much to over 800 people that Ooh. tuned in to today's podcast. That's freaking crazy. A big thank you to Fire. all of you. Uh, obviously, there's no show without you. Uh, the, the the people that come to check this out each and every week or every day, I should say, Monday through Friday. Uh, once again, a big thank you to all of the Super Chats and the new channel members. They allow for us to do the big giveaways, folks, and we do have one coming. Uh, again, all of our big giveaways are going to be done at the end of the year because we thought that uh, Stalker 2 was going to be released in the first quarter. That has been delayed until September. Uh, so FYI, uh, outside of the two $500 birthday bear shows that we have for Mrs. Boom and myself in September and November, and the $1,500 giveaway show in uh, for the holiday, which, of course, we're going to match once again. And we're going to see if we can exceed it. we got to see how the finances pl- uh, play out. We are adding a fourth monster giveaway. And, of course, it's our mom and pop way of, you know, a small company, Double Barrel Gaming, helping out a small company. Uh, And, of course, the developers of of Stalker 2, obviously, they had been uh, they've been through it. Uh, They've been through the ringer. Uh, They've lost some uh, some people on a dev team who stayed behind in Ukraine to defend the country and were killed in the line of duty. Uh, they have been moved, uh, and thankfully, safely, uh, their families have been moved to Prague, which is where they continue to finish off Stalker 2. Well, Mrs. Boom and I uh, have announced uh, that we are we are buying, at full price, 15 copies of Stalker 2 to give away live on the air. We're going to have a release party, uh, and it's just going to be us giving away 15 copies. And again, we're buying them at full boat. Uh, just do the math. Uh, it's over $1,000 worth of giveaways on top of what we're already doing. And it's just our way of just giving back to the community, paying it forward, so to speak. And uh, listen, uh, we can't do that without the Super Chats, without the channel memberships. Uh, and I want to say thank you so much for the outstanding generosity. Um, and of course, I'm going to close out today's show, folks, with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully one day, It'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, Craig. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of X-Vlog Live. Hey.